We painted a huge Imperial Fists army to our gold level. So this army has been painted by Kev, one of the artists here at Siege, and it includes a whole host of models from the Primaris range, including a Repulsor Executioner, Impulsor, Inceptors, Assault Incessors, we've got Normal Incessors, Heavy Intercessors, we've got Infiltrators, Blade Guard, Eradicators, and then we've got a whole host of characters to lead the army. So a bit of backstory about this project. Our client is a massive Imperial Fists fan and absolutely loves the color scheme, the background, the story, and lots of the characters that are in the chapter and the Legion in 30K. Uh, and they wanted to have a, a really high end quality army in their collection. Uh, and obviously have given us the absolute honor and privilege of bringing it to life for them. I'm gonna start with my favorite model, which is the Redemptor Dreadnought. I absolutely love Dreadnoughts from the Primaris range. I've always been a huge fan uh, of Dreadnoughts just in over the years of collecting Marines myself. And the, the Redemptor does not disappoint. I do love the really boxy, heavily armored look of the Redemptor. It's one of the first things that's super, super obvious about the miniature. Uh, and the fact that it's got loads of firepower as well with the onslaught Gatling cannon and the other weapon systems that are on it as well. Kev's done a phenomenal job here, as you can see. Just adding all the sort of different tones to, to the yellow as well. Yellow being one of those colors that tends to be stigmatized is a little bit more difficult, but we've really, really enjoyed working on the project for, for our client and adding that sort of like tonal variance on the surface of the armor panels that you can see there where it's lighter, goes through a mid-tone, obviously has sort of darker colors in the shadows. Um, one of the things you can expect with our gold level here at Siege is that you do get that level of attention on the individual panels. Uh, with that tonal variance and, and a lot of glazing work and stuff done on the miniatures, as you can see here. Um, all the script and stuff has all been written on the sarcophagus as well, so you've got specific text written on there. I absolutely love the use of the kind of like real maroon burgundy tone for the Aquila, just on the front of that sarcophagus, which I think is a really lovely touch. Full transfers across the whole entire project uh, you know, on the various vehicles and things, and you can see them just here on the uh, on the Redemptors. You've got like various ones just on the shoulder guards, etc., on the shoulder sort of armor, and you've also got a couple on the front of the sarcophagus as well. Um, but one of the things I absolutely love about it, one of my favorite parts of it, is just the real care and attention when it comes to all the little individual details. You've got the missiles there in the rocket pod just on the top of the sarcophagus. Uh, and if we move the model around, you'll see all the attention on all the edges. They've got multiple stages of highlighting across every single aspect of the miniature. Every single edge has got loads of different variant tones on there, just up to the bright point, um, and a really, really super clean, sharp finish across every aspect of detail on the miniature. Uh, and that's this awesome Redemptor from the army. So next up, let's have a look at some of the armor from the force. Obviously, we've got a big split between infantry and, and armor, but the two tanks that are in this are, are really great. We've got the awesome Repulsor Executioner, which I'm just going to pick up really carefully. First things first, it has got lots of guns, so much so that the Orcs are pretty much jealous of this vehicle. But, um, but we've got great selection of weaponry on there. Um, and I'll go through and explain a couple of the details and things as we rotate the model around. But you can see first things first, you've got all the transfers and things that have been applied to the miniature, but on, on one of the things that's consistent across all the armor on this uh, on this project. Um, you've got that really lovely variance of tone. You can see that on every single armor panel, We've got loads of different tonal gradation across those panels just to, to add that lighting effect onto the armor. Um, again, full edge highlight stages. We've got multiple stages of highlighting all the way across every individual little detail. Some of my favorite little things, especially about this, is that it's a very much a, a, a good primary color tridic scheme. And what I mean by that is you've got obviously the yellow armor. I've got the red accent there with a Tech Marine gunner. Some of the little details like the skulls and the book here are done in that lovely maroon sort of crimson sort of color just to obviously co contrast really nicely to yellow. And then we've got these tiny little details like, for example, little buttons and things that are just inside the um the, the sort of the cupola here on the top of the uh, on the top of the turret the inside buttons on that hatch are in blue so a real nice use of those tones just to actually add that onto the model and again you can see here on the um on the targeting uh, targeter here at the front or on top of the main weaponry uh, you've got that lovely blue screen as well just to add that sort of spot color from the primary color triadic scheme um, all the text and stuff that's just on these scrolls is done really really refined we've got a lovely amount of detail on there just adding all that intricacy uh, we've got some extra little details that have been put on this vehicle by our clients so those scrolls on the front you've got some a curled up kind of parchment here at the front as well which is nice you'll see all of the little uh, telescopic viewports on the turret are done as well with that blue blue sort of uh, screen on there which is just really nice our client opted to have this banner on the side of the tank as well and we've left that blank as per their request but they might be adding some extra heraldry or something on there there might be something personal they want to put on there but a uh, really nice decorative kind of piece of, uh, of like sort of banner that's just hanging off the side of the tank which is quite cool um, but again as we move it around you'll see a really Really, really lovely set of, uh, of sharp edge highlights on every aspect and facet of this uh, very, very sort of angled armored tank that uh, the uh, Repulsor is, 
or the Rob Holster Executioner is, should I say. Um, but yeah, amazing, amazing miniature. Really nice to get the opportunity to paint it to such a high standard. And uh, yeah, just really overall uh, of a beautiful model. So next up, let's have a look at the uh, Impulsor. So the troop uh, transport of the force. Uh, again, a really cool model. Uh, do like the open back on it as well. I think the open back just uh, gives me vibes of just Marines just jumping off the back of it, obviously engaging in targets or getting into combat quickly, which I do really like. Um, you can see here we've got the shield just on the top. So we've got the void shield generator or the shield generator for the tank. Uh, nice to protect those infantry as they're getting sort of taken forward uh, on the battlefield, which is cool. You can see all of the telescopic ports on there and all of the uh, sort of uh, telescope sights on the cupolas are uh, done in black as well, With that, again, with that blue kind of glassy sort of lens on there which i think is great really nice little attention to some of these extra little, little sort of like either, either dials or sort of buttons or things just here on the top which are really cool uh, just that use of blue again uh, in the back if we try and have a look at the back of the uh, of the tank as well you'll see all the screens and sort of like life support reading things uh, are all done as well and painted uh, really sort of sharply and neatly which i think is absolutely great um, you can see the transfers applied to these tanks as well so we've got the tactical symbol there just on the side just to show it ferries infantry around um, and again, you can see the really nice use of that tonal variance, just adding that sort of mid-tone and shadow to each of the panels just to add that gradation of colour and light on the model. Um, our client added on this really cool sort of uh, Imperial Fist banner on the side as well, uh, just to maybe it's, it's a specific sergeant's banner or something like that, just to show which vehicle this is actually linked to or squad that this is linked to, this vehicle. But that's just this awesome impulsor uh, to, to ferry around some of these massive amounts of infantry that the army has got. So next, let's jump in and have a look at some of the infantry. And as I mentioned, there's a load in this force. Um, we're going to start with some of the flying infantry. So we're going to start with the Inceptors. Inceptors being really awesome for just striking targets quite quickly. We've got this really awesome sort of attacking pose on him. He's just like landing and firing as he comes down. Um, hopefully you can see the amount of tonal variance that's just on all of the armour. Um, again, we've got lots of progressive highlight stages to really define each of those parts of the segmented armour of this, uh, this Gravis insertion armour, which is just awesome. You can see that lovely crimson maroon kind of like Aquila just on the chest as well. Uh, this chap's obviously got a rebreather as well, so you can just see he's got a rebreather on uh, on his bare face, which is quite cool. Um, and again, we haven't touched upon it yet, and I will speak about it now, but our client's elected to have uh, almost like an Arctic kind of like snow world kind of basing across the force, which is quite cool. Um, but something I do really like is that Kev's done a great job of integrating that environment with the uh, flora on the bases. So you can see there the snow is heavily sort of in the tufts as well, which just really sort of links the two quite nicely and just makes them fit in a bit better. Um, jumping back onto the model, one of the things I do really like is like all the wrist buttons and dials and things are done in that blue again. So you've got that really nice use of blue, which is a complementary colour for the yellow sort of uh, colour of these Imperial Fists. Uh, just that just works really well with the miniature and just uh, just gives that sort of like uh, spot colour just nicely prominent on the wrist there, as you can see. Uh, but that's just one of these awesome Inceptors from the squad of five. So let's have a look at some more infantry in this force, and we're going to see a lot of them in this showcase. But we're going to jump to probably one of my favourite units from the Primaris range. It is the Humble Assault Intercessor. Um, I do really like them. These are awesome in some really aggressive charging poses. So let's grab one of them and have a look. Uh, let's pick this one with the bandolier. Just charging forward there with a bandolier of grenades um, with his uh, chainsword stowed, which I think is great. Um, but again, you can see the level of refinement on all the edges across the various areas of the armour panelling. Um, and again, you've got that lovely subtle shade and work done across all the other aspects of armour as well. Um, really do love the aggressive charging pose that this miniature has. And again, Assault Intercessors being one of my favourites, I just think they really show that kind of aggressive nature of the, the, the Sartes, which I think is good. Um, as you can see here, again, we've got those lovely little spot colours just on the wrist. So you can see the blue sort of like uh, spot colour just on there. Transfer have been done across this army on all of the infantry that haven't got sculpted pads as you'll see um, and again that blue has been used just on all of the visors uh, on all of the sort of like lenses of the, of the helmets across the miniatures also um, but again really clean sharp execution across every aspect of the models and a really warm and rich yellow which i think just suits imperial fists really really well so next up, let's have a look at one of the regular intercessors from this force, the backbone of a Primaris army. Uh, I'm going to pick this guy here, which I do really like because he's looking at his screen while advancing. And you've also got like a fallen bolt pistol on the floor as well, which is a nice little bit of extra detail. I just hope he doesn't trip over it. But um, but uh, you can see that all the, all the face and everything has been painted really cleanly and nicely with multiple tones, all the eyes and everything picked out as you'd expect with us here at Siege. Um, and one of the things I do really, really think works nicely on this miniature is you've got really refined uh, text on that purity seal just on the leg there. 
little things like that, the attention that we put into those parts of the miniatures is really important because it helps tell that story, that narrative, it adds that kind of like heritage to that miniature, which I think is really important with 40K. And uh, Kev's done a really great job of adding that across every miniature on all those little incremental details. Um, one of the things that's really cool about this, as you can see on that, on that wrist mounted screen unit there, you can see all the buttons and dials are done. Um, painted in a blue again to contrast against the yellow, the rich yellow that's on the miniatures. And then you've got that lovely uh, use of that maroon again on the Aquila, which I think just really, really looks great. One of the things specifically that uh, helps break up the yellow, because obviously it's a very dominant colour, is the, the use of black on the leather and pouches and things across the force. In that midsection with the belt and also where the sort of like the gun holster will go and things like that. That use of black obviously having a high contrast value to the to the rest of the miniature just looks really great and uh, helps frame the rest of the parts of the miniature that are bright yellow as well. Same with the trims on the shoulder pads. So let's have a look at a few more as there are 30 intercessors and it's always good to show off different miniatures from the force. So I'm going to pull forward at this guy here. Now something that I haven't mentioned yet which you may or may not have seen already is that we actually have all of the miniatures are on 40 mil bases. So our client specifically requests that they wanted all of their infantry on them, um, whether it's just for consistency of look of the miniatures or whether it's obviously for just display purposes so they're a bit more stable in the cabinet potentially. Um, but having them on 40 mil bases actually really gives us a, a greater sort of workspace to actually add a bit more of environmental effect to the miniature. So we've got the snow that's just obviously on the bases plus extra tufts and things like that. Um, this is another uh, awesome intercessor here where he's uh, dual wielding, so to speak, obviously with pistol and uh, rifle. Maybe he's out of ammunition on the, uh, on the, on the bolt rifle, uh, but just firing away there with a pistol at some unforeseen uh, foe in front of him. And you can see he's got quite a few little extra details. Now, this chap is one of the veterans, so it is a, uh, is a Stern Guard model, one of the Stern Guard models that our client wants to use. Uh, and that's denoted by the, uh, the, the crux that's just on the shoulder pad there. So you can see that transfer showing that he's elite status and the white helm that's magnetized to his, uh, to his belts or mag locked on. Um, but as you see, just as we move the model, there's some really nice extra little touches like you've got the, uh, the crimson kind of skull just on the knee pad there. Uh, just a little extra detail. Again, using that lovely rich maroon color just to contrast the yellow really nicely. And you can see it's got a really awesome bare face painted on this miniature. Lots of bare faces scattered across the force. Now, one thing I haven't touched upon that I will mention now as well as the 40 mil bases is that our client has actually elected to have lots of spare heads painted for this force. Uh, so a lot of the heads on this army are just tacked in at the moment so that our client can change them on miniature to miniature as they choose which is quite an interesting thing and something a little bit different that we've not done on a project before, but it just shows you the level of kind of like intricacy and refinement that we do on what you can actually have as a client with us here at Siege. Uh, so again, really awesome miniature the, with great bare face that's painted on there uh, and another one of the awesome intercessors or elite intercessors or veteran intercessors that is in this force. So next, let's have a look at some of the more stealthier troops from this force. And let's have a look at some of the infiltrators. They've got a great selection of them in the army. So let's pull forward this chap here. And this is the sergeant of one of the infiltrator squads with his trusty servo friend, as you can see, just hovering above him, uh, beckoning on his squad mates and brothers forward with him. You can see he's, he's also scanning and looking at a screen, but just got the pistol in a, in a, in a sort of like defensive sort of like stance, which is quite nice. Um, really like the use of the red for the, around the neck, obviously, on all the comms gear and sort of like neck courgette area that he's got. Uh, just again, that splash of red just to work with the rest of the colour scheme. Uh, and you can see and what I mentioned about all the uh, sort of black areas of detail. So the bolter that's just hanging off as you're on the strap. But all that leather work and pouches and things like that done in black just to really break up the uh, really warm, rich yellow and just add that high contrast value onto the miniatures. Uh, you can see really nice sharp edge highlighting on all the metallics and all those other areas of detail that are just on the models. Um, and again, you've got the, uh, the really, really awesome screen there just on the wrist. Uh, with all those buttons and things again in, a, in that blue using that lovely complementary color uh, with the color scheme just to add interest and uh, really draw the eye to that area on the miniature. So let's pick up another one as there are 15 of these infiltrators in this force and I'm going to grab uh, the one that's got the helix gauntlet which is the sort of Medicaid part of it. You can't have this many uh, Imperial Fist going to battle without some uh, some good old medic in the, the unit. Um, one thing that he, uh, he's he got on his base is he's actually got some extra medical equipment on the base which I think is quite cool, something I've not seen before uh, and again that's a really good demonstration of how having this model on a 40 mil base just allows us to do a little bit more narrative wise for this specific miniature. Um, so as we move it around let's have a look we're going to have a look at the backpack first. 
You can see all the vials and things with that blood and liquid that's in there just sloshing around as he moves, which is quite cool. And Kev's done a great job of emphasizing that kind of like movement of liquid, plus also the refraction of light on those vials, which is just lovely. Um, as we move around the front of the model, you'll see obviously he's also, I don't know what it is, I'm just seem to be picking up everyone that's looking at a gauntlet today, but um, but as you can see, that gauntlet has also got the, uh, the sort of the injector needle on it as there, as you can see, and you've got the, again, all the screen and buttons and dials done in that lovely blue. Uh, one of the things I do really like is this has also got like a, almost like a bionic eye attachment on, on, on top of the, of the helmet as well, just to scan for extra sort of like life readings or something like that. Uh, you can see the lovely light on the backpack is done in a nice sort of subtle cool blue as well, which is just great. Still using that sort of like, like that color triad there just on the miniature, just to add that sort of nuanced color of blue on that backpack unit. The white as well, if we go back to the backpack, you can see it's quite vibrant, but it's also got a nice amount of shading on there as well, just to add that interest onto that piece, uh, which is great. And it doesn't take away from the brightness of the yellow. It kind of like works quite nicely in unison with it. Uh, so that's this awesome Medicaid. Uh, I don't know what the exact title of this uh, of this role is within the Infiltrate unit. You can correct me in the comments, um, but he's almost like an Apothecary Novitiate kind of chap. So yeah, correct me in the comments. So let's look at some of the heavier infantry from this force. Uh, just put this Medicaid chat back and let's grab one of these heavy intercessors. Uh, got five of them in this force. And again, really, really great set of models. You can see that really tougher, heavier looking Gravis armor that's just on this miniature. Uh, again, Kev's done a really great job of edge highlighting, really refined through multiple stages of highlighting and shading across every aspect of detail on the miniature. I love the subtle diffusion of color on the backpack there on that round sort of generator area. You can see it just gets slightly darker towards the bottom, which is one of my favorite uses of that sort of the, the kind of tonal variance that we've applied to the model. Again, you can see lots and lots of extra little details on this chat because of the bulkier heavy armor, lots of extra sort of neck armor. Again, every single one of those little facets is fully edge highlighted and shaded with multiple stages of paintwork just to really put as much contrast on the miniature and really define all of those hard sculpted details. As we move around the back of the model, you'll see it's got some extra pipes and things just on that model. So you can see obviously all of those have been done in metallics with also highlighting on them. Again, you've got a really lovely purity seal there just on the, on the waist. Um, that's got obviously loads of scripture and details on there as well. Uh, really showing that that sort of like that deed or that heritage that this chap has got. That tiny amount of detail of the ammunition just on that bolter there in the, in the box mag you can see, even picked out in a contrasting kind of like coppery tone to represent the ammunition or the casings of the bolter rounds, uh, which is really good. Um, our client has elected to add a lot of uh, sort of like targeting lenses and things on backpacks as you'll see through various miniatures as you see this showcase video. And this chap has also got one on his back as well, which I think is quite fitting for the Imperial Fists. It kind of shows their kind of like defensive kind of like role uh, quite nicely by extra little details like that. So let's look at the other Gravis infantry from this force. And we could not have an Imperial Fist army without some eradicators, some really heavy hitting infantry from the army. I do love the muzzle burn on the melter there. Just always been a big fan of melter weaponry uh, myself personally, and it's good to see some in this force. You can see the relevant transfers have been applied onto the shoulder pads as well for the battlefield role that the uh, eradicators perform. And you can see also that he's got some sculpted uh, Imperial Fist shoulder pads just on the arm there. Again, really nice use of those sculpted pads on sort of more sort of elite or senior models within the uh, within the army as well, which is just great. So if we, um, if we have a look here on the back, you will see obviously all the leather work done in that black again used to contrast the armor color and really break up the individual details on the miniatures and add sort of like instant sort of understanding of what those things are on the model, which is just great. Um, again, we've got a couple of little bits and bobs on here, which really, really do sort of draw the eye, for example, the muzzle burn and also the bare head with the rebreather. Uh, but again, all painted really exceptionally and uh, Kev's done a fantastic job across all of these miniatures. So before we look at the characters, let's have a look at the last infantry squad. I've been saving the, the best infantry squad till last. I'm glad that in a bolter storm army that this we've got some close combat infantry, and that is none other than the blade guard. Now, I do really love what our client has elected to have done on these blade guards. You can see these awesome 30k Imperial Fist shields that have been added to the blade guard, and they literally fit on these models and work perfectly like a glove in the words of Jim Carrey. Um, I do really like the use of the blue kind of like color around the power node on the blade to show the electrical field that's just obviously like uh, energizing the blade, which is really nice. 
Um, and again, the advanced and aggressive attacking pose of these infantry just complements the more stoic kind of defensive look of the rest of the miniatures. Um, one thing that's really prevalent on the models on these shields is you've got this awesome kind of like glowing blue orbs, so like the uh, the power nodes on the back of the shield, just to show that the shield has got an energized kind of field around it as well, which is just great. You can see it's, he's got all of the relevant kind of elite transfers that have been added to the shoulder guards, obviously with Imperial Fist iconography in the center, which is just great. You can see that lovely power node on the blade again there. And you see the variance of tone and color on those blades as well, just to show the light refracting and shimmering on the uh, swords and the metallic area of those swords. Um, if we jump around the front, you'll see obviously he's got a really refined purity seal there just on the front uh, with all that text and everything fully painted on there. And I do really like the use of the maroon for the tabards. Again, it breaks up the model, adds on that sort of primary color triadic color on there, so it complements really nicely with the yellow and the blue. Um, and overall, just a really exquisitely painted miniature. One of the things that for me is really nice is that the gold, gold and yellow sometimes can clash quite quite massively. And it's nice what Kev's done here to use a gold which just stands out really well on the piece, but at the same time doesn't take away from the yellow of the armor. Uh, so those values, obviously the contrast values on both of those things are just great. Uh, but overall, a really exquisite miniature from this army. So because I love the Blade Guards so much, I'm going to grab another one to show you because I really feel that they are probably one of my favourite infantry squads from this army. So in vain of Sigismund, uh, we're seeing one of these Blade Guard that is issuing a challenge to some Falzinos or Heretic, pointing at them, asking them to be next, in to be slayed. Uh, really awesome pose that Kev selected to put this model in uh, and you can see that sort of really relaxed stoic kind of pose that he's got with a blade kind of like in a relaxed hand. Really nice open pose as well so it shows you more of the details that are on these blade guards. You haven't got like swords crossing chests or shields in front and things like this on this chap but he's got his shield just mag locked to his power pack as well which is just great and really shows you the uh, the use of that burgundy or that sort of maroon crimson colour or just on the chest for the Aquila and also on the, um, on the tabards. Do like the person heraldry there just on the tilt shield just that half and half with that splash of white on there just to add that really nice sort of a more saturated uh, kind of like vibrant white that's just on there and again Kev's done a great job on all the faces on these just really refined details all the eyes uh, teeth everything you'd expect painted to a high standard on the face has been done on these guys across all of the bare heads on the force so that's this awesome blade guard miniature from the army so with looking at that blade guard, let's jump into my favorite part of any army or force, which is the characters. And this army does not disappoint. We have eight of them. Uh, so really, really great selection of miniatures to lead and command uh, on the tabletop or have in a display cabinet. All of the hierarchy of this army just looks phenomenal. We're gonna jump in and have a look at the ancient first and foremost, uh, the flag bearer or the, the carrier of the colors of the chapter. Uh, this model is absolutely exquisite and I love what Kev has done with it. The refinement of the text on some of the areas at the bottom is just absolutely beautiful. Really well done. Uh, you can almost, I wouldn't say it's readable, but it looks very convincing that it's actual text, which is just great. You can see you've got honor just written across the scroll there and then you've got the imperial fist symbol just on the uh, center point of that banner uh, but again really really nicely done if we move the model around you can see on the scroll on the bolt we've got the word fury written as well which is quite cool um, and yeah you can see just a really nice attention to detail on that so we've got the transfers obviously he's got more of the dead sort of decorative one obviously with a laurel around it just to show he's kind of like more of a hierarchy in the, in the chapter if we move around the back you can see the little blue lenses and things just on the back of the legs which is just cool um, and again you can see the sharp refined highlighting all the sort of areas of leather and metal work if we move around here to the other shoulder pad you can see you've got that lovely crimson kind of skull just in the middle um, of that um, laurel there in the, in the green which just works really nicely and we've got the white uh, helmet just signifying that he is a veteran or a sort of more senior role within the chapter that's this awesome chapter ancient that's part of this force a Space Marine army has to have a librarian and this one does not disappoint. We've got the awesome Primaris librarian in this army, which is just really, really great. And uh, I've got to say this, um, I do love the almost Jedi style pose on this one, the unlimited power kind of hand outstretched, which is just great. Uh, you can see the amount of time and attention that's been put onto spinaches just because of how intricate the little details are, like the little padlocks, the keys and things like that. Not to mention the subtle glow effect around the, the visor. 
uh, on, the, on the helmet and obviously you've got the psychic hood there with all the nodes that are glowing as well. Um, really nice use of the yellow steel on that shoulder pad there and also look, nodding back to some of the early second edition kind of librarians with that yellow pipe work just on the uh, on the sort of underside there which is just great. Um, if we move around the minute you can see the really nicely subtly glazed and blended cloak there just to add all those different sort of tones onto that sort of uh, cloak that the librarian's got. You can see those purity seals with all refined text on them. Um, we've got the uh, scroll here on the shoulder pad that says Tyrius so he's just named this uh, librarian quite nicely and then we have a really beautifully blended sword there just that full sword. Again, nodding back to the earlier iterations of librarians with that kind of filigree power node inlay just on that force weapon, which is uh, which is always warms my heart to see on the newer models when they nod back to the older miniatures. And that's uh, just an awesome little detail that's just on there. As we go around the front, you'll see the hand has a very subtle glove as well, which is really nice. Uh, and just uh, just shows that he's about to unleash some psychic majesty that he's com in command of. Uh, but a really, really awesome, awesome miniature. And I'm glad that we got the opportunity to paint a librarian for this client. So after looking at the psychic majesty of this force in the librarian, I'm glad we've got one in the force. Uh, this army has three Primaris lieutenants. We couldn't have a Primaris force without a Primaris lieutenant. And having three of them all in different poses is really good. I'm going to have a look at my favorite one first. So I wanted to show this guy off first, purely because he is one of the only models in the army wielding a fist. And uh, it's quite convenient. He has the word duty written on the fist. Uh, just as he punches people, he, he fulfills his duty, I suppose you could say that. Um, but yeah, really, really well, uh, well painted here by Kev. Obviously, every single facet of that armor fully and sharply highlighted through multiple stages, as I mentioned. We've got some really cool transfers that have been applied to this. Obviously, you've got the lieutenant transfer, and then you've got the imperial fists, uh, sort of like a chapter symbol with a bit of heraldry there on the shoulder pad, which just looks really great. Um, again, the use of that black leather on all the bits or pouches and sort of uh, gun holders and things like that just works really nicely. Um, and again, you can see even on the plastic undersuit, we've got really nice several stages of highlighting just on those ribbed parts there just to show the light refracting off of those. Um, really calm and collect like face there on him as well, which is quite quite strange considering he's about to blat someone with the pi with the pistol or smack him in the face with with duty, which is why I've named his power fist. But um, but yeah, really really phenomenal lieutenant and uh, really nice aggressive uh, pose, which I think is just great. Uh, so that's my favourite lieutenant from the army. So after looking at this lieutenant, let's have a look at the next one, which is in a really stoic pose. Um, I think I've mentioned this on the podcast before. This is kind of like the guy that I always say is like hailing a cab, um, but he's, he's, he's awesome, awesome pose and it really fit in with Imperial Fists. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's a really good sort of like sword raised, which it nods back really nicely to kind of like early second edition models where lots of miniatures would have like raised swords or axes or, or arms or whatever, etc. Um, but it just really sort of synergizes with those earlier models quite nicely. Lots of decorative little details, like for example, you've got the laurel just under the left uh, left knee pad. Um, then you've got that lovely little red crimson skull just in the center. Uh, just again, really relaxed kind of arm there with a the bolt pistol. You can see that lovely Imperial Fist sculpted pad with fully edge highlights into details across all of it. Uh, we've got the uh, central stripe there on the, on the helmet just to denote him as a lieutenant as well with that really awesome laurel just around the helmet, which is great. And as we move around the model, uh, you'll see obviously that every little detail on him is fully painted. And again, the soft shading that goes into the deeper shading just in some of the recesses is just really nice and graduated. So it's not super stark. Uh, it's got really smooth transitions across all of the aspects of the armor, which is just really, really well done. So let's look at the last lieutenant. And uh, I, I do struggle between the first one that I showed you and this one because I do really like this one also. It kind of has a very much a, uh, a are you not entertained kind of pose from Gladiator where he's like arm outstretched, like like beckoning on his next foe in a very challenging and menacing kind of like stance, which I think is great. Uh, Kev's done a great job of adding the refraction of light on the sword with some darker and lighter tones just on the metallics. And then you've got that really awesome power node on the blade with that electrified field just uh, sparking away there as you can see. Um, but yeah, really, really awesome advancing pose as well. Uh, do love, again, the use of the green on the laurels and things just on the legs. Think little things like, for example, the jackpot on the thigh plate. It's something that, that we really take a lot of time and attention to do, like add that sort of narrative onto the miniature and show that that part of the armor has function. And I haven't mentioned it before when other miniatures in, in other showcases or this one, but the little things like that really add a lot of interest onto a miniature by showing and that, that detail has function on the model, that little jackpot on the thigh there, as you can see. 
And we've got the gold that's been used on the cross guard and also the skull on the van brace, uh, which, which contrasts the yellow really nicely. It doesn't sort of clash, which is a bit of a concern when painting gold next to yellow. But Kev's done a phenomenal job of using a more desaturated kind of like antique kind of gold on this model, which I think is just, is just great. And that's demonstrated across other gold areas of the force as well. As we move around the back, you can see again all that leather to break up the yellow and that black that's been done really nicely. And on the pad here, we have the Primark's name written on his shoulder pad. We've got Dawn just written on there as well, which is just great. Uh, so that's this awesome advancing attacking lieutenant, which uh, I think is a really, really lovely way to finish off all of the lieutenants in this army. So next, let's have a look at the chaplain in the force. And again, like what Primaris force would not have a chaplain? Kev's done a great job of working on this really iconic chaplain model. Uh, again, wielding the Crozier's Arcanum aloft, and uh, I think it's a really stoic and pious looking model. Um, all the black armor has got a really sharp selection of highlight stages done across all the intricacies of the armor paneling. I love the amount of gold that's on the model as well. So a lot of gold to really add a lot of contrast to the obsidian black armor. As you can see, it's got the Imperial Fist heraldry there just on the shoulder pad, one of the sculpted pads. Lovely transition on the yellow, just obviously from that bright yellow all the way through the sort of mid-tone to the deep, rich tones that are in the shadows. Um, I love the maroon used on the gun case, and I think that's quite a nice uh, use of colour. Plus, also, you'll see it when I rotate it around again on the, uh, on the tabard. But on the back, we've got loads of scripture, and you can see the real intricacy that's gone into that scripture that's just on there. Not legible, of course, but really done in a way which makes it look very convincing that it is loads of text and information and sort of like uh, different sort of things that are on there. Um, I like the use of the blue on some of the little sort of gems and things on the back of the legs or the lenses that are on the back of the legs, which is just great. Uh, the other shoulder pad has got a scroll on it with his name, which I'm guessing, which is Varus. So you can see that's just been put on there, which is done really nicely. Uh, and as we move around the front, you can see that rich burgundy cloth work that on the front of the miniature, uh, which is, again, something you'll see in various characters through the force. I do like what Kev's done with the uh, sort of the cold tones that are used on the bone, uh, just really to add more of kind of like a menacing kind of feel to a chaplain, which is something that a chaplain should, should kind of bring to the table and also an army, that kind of like menacing kind of like skull visage that uh, is iconic with them. So after looking at the chaplain, where else is there to go other than the two captains that lead this force? I'm going to pull forward one of them to start off with. Uh, this captain has come from the Imperium magazine. Uh, wielding his sword aloft there, which is very common with lots of uh, sort of captain and heroic miniatures from 40k and from Warhammer, um, using the plasma pistol to execute some fallen Xenos or foul enemy of the Emperor, which is just great. Uh, you can see the use of that burgundy on the uh, sort of tabard and also on the cloth cape. As I turn it around in a minute, you'll see that. Uh, with purity free-handed on the scroll, just on the thigh plate as well, just again, real good use of, uh, of uh, sort of text and sort of like control of painting to get that on there neatly and sharply. He's got lots of trinkets obviously on his belt. He's got a couple of bolt arounds, which is very fitting for Imperial Fist. You've got that scabbard there with that lovely blue uh, sort of uh, gem just on the uh, sort of the Aquila or the winged part as well, which is just great. Um, and something which Kev has done, which just shows obviously thought, and I don't know how we're going to see this, but on the top of the scabbard, Kev's even painted the hole or the socket, if you want to call it anything, that the power sword goes into, which is just, again, nice use of understanding of the object uh, as well, which is just great. Um, as we move around the back, you'll see it's got this beautiful burgundy cape um, with all that sort of subtle tonal work that's done there, various tones and colours used to add sort of depth and shadow on there, which is just great. Um, and again, those little tassels hanging down there, also done in that burgundy. You can see the screens on the wrist done in a lovely blue as well. So you've got those sort of lit up sort of buttons and dials that are just on there. He's got a slider, a little button there, silver button there with a stud with a little slider. What that does, I don't know. Um, but then we've also got the got the really vibrant plasma glow just on the uh, plasma pistol as well, which is great. Um, and it's nice to have that kind of offset to the glow from the power node on the uh, on the power saw with that lightning just arcing off of it as well. Uh, but that's one of the two captains that lead this really impressive and awesome Imperial Fist army. So last, but by no means least, we have the Imperial Fists himself in the Gravis Captain from this force, the absolute bringer of pain that is the dual wielding power fist Gravis Captain of the army. Uh, what an impressive miniature in a very aggressive advancing pose, uh, leading the army from the front. You can see wielding two power fists, so he really means business, and you've got one with a bolt storm gauntlet on it and the other one that's just got, uh, just got obviously a nice green laurel on it, so uh, a bit of a compromise there on the other fist. But um, really, really well executed by Kev. You can see the exemplary use of that uh, sort of burgundy across all the scattered details, the aquilas and wings, both on the shoulder, 
at the, the cowling of the power fist for the Bolt Storm Gauntlet and also on the shin of the miniature. Uh, and that's before we talk about this beautiful cape that's on the back here. And you can see the lovely subtle tones and highlight stages that have been done on there to add that intricacy of kind of like weight of light and stuff on there, which is just really good. You can see the uh, the ammo feed for the Bolt Storm Gauntlet. You've got the hopper there or the magazine there, which is just great uh, with lots of a belt feed. Uh, and as we move around, you can see all the transfers have been applied to this as well. Um, finishing off the miniature with a really well executed face with lots of really super, super clean details. All the hair has striations and that, all of that painted on just to show the depth of, uh, of the haircut that he's got. Um, and again, a really, really menacing looking captain that is going to lead this Imperial force to victory for the Emperor, for Dawn and for Terra. So I do hope that you've liked this showcase video. It's been absolutely amazing to show you all of these Imperial Fists at our gold level. I just want to say a big thank you to our client for giving us the trust and privilege of working on this force for you. It's a really, really exemplary force that we're super proud of and I do hope that's going to lead you to victory in the future. If you're watching this and you're interested in a commission with us, be it for an army like this at gold level or be it for a character or small force, please do not hesitate in going to our website, which is linked in the description of this video, where you can get a quote for a project like this or any other. I very much hope you like the video. From all the team and myself here at Siege, a massive thank you for watching. I will see you very soon on the next one. Take care.